We're going to begin today with thousands of drivers for rideshare and delivery companies in Canada, in the United States, and the UK, all expected to put things in park today. A one-day strike that will hit companies including Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash. The drivers of those companies fighting for higher wages and better working conditions at a time when shareholders are pushing for higher profits from the rideshare companies. The temporary work stoppage may cause people in Toronto, Vancouver, in Winnipeg to rethink how they're getting to and from their Valentine's dinner dates, perhaps. There's a new report out from advocacy groups suggesting Uber drivers in Toronto make only around $6 an hour. That's about $10 below minimum wage. So that's the kind of fact that's really propelling what we're seeing today, this one-day global action for more money and better conditions. Marianne has some further details. Good morning. Good morning, Heather. Yes, it's Valentine's Day, but rideshare and delivery drivers say, you know what, it's time for a breakup. In Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver, they're saying, put down your phones, silence and ignore, even just uh, don't use those gig apps, things like Uber, Uber mm -hmm. Eats, even Lyft and DoorDash just for Valentine's Day because they're trying to send a message to the companies that they want better pay, better treatment, just better conditions overall. And it's all in solidarity with thousands of gig workers, not just here in Canada, but also around North America, as well as in the UK. For instance, in the United States, 44 cities are seeing job action today with these gig workers, 10 of them, including Chicago and Miami. There's drivers there not picking up anyone and bringing them to and from the airport for a two hour window. In the UK, for instance, delivery drivers there for five hours will not be picking up or dropping off any deliveries. Now here in Toronto, later this morning at nine o'clock Eastern, this is the largest rideshare market in the country. And drivers will be heading to Toronto City Hall today to stage a bit of a strike there. And from there, they're going to continue on to the head office of Uber. Again, this is all about sending that message that they want better treatment, particularly better pay. And we spoke with one gig uh, worker. Uh, he's an auto share driver, and he had this to say. Recently went out for a shift uh, last week, a uh, two-hour shift, and uh, the total earnings for that shift were $5.40. Uh, so I can speak in experience uh, that uh, we are facing a crisis as workers right now. Uh, at a time where life is increasingly unaffordable, it is uh, absolutely abhorrent that uh, these kinds of earnings are allowed to continue in this province. And so it is just very difficult, as you heard from many of these gig workers, to make ends meet. Ridefare also has challenged uh, Uber's uh, claims that Drivers in Toronto make just over $33 an hour. Ridefare says in actuality, once you take away all of those expenses, as you mentioned earlier, Heather, they actually only make just over $6 an hour, so very little money. We're going to talk more about that. It's mm -hmm. quite an interesting study that we'll get to uh, as we continue to cover this today. But in Canada, in some parts of the country, there is legislation to address some of the issues in the gig economy. Is there not? Yes, there's a new legislation that's not yet taken effect in Ontario as well as in British Columbia. For instance, in British Columbia, once it takes effect sometime uh, this year, it's supposed to happen early 2024, so very soon, they're going to see better conditions for these workers as well as better pay, bringing them just over minimum wage. In Ontario, new legislation, which has not yet been enacted, would also bring them up to the provincial minimum wage, which is about $15 an hour in that province. Here's more from one uh, economist who's been studying this. There are definitely kinds of workers who spend only a couple of hours at a time working in this, where they might have another job or they might be on a kind of paternity or maternity leave. The fact of the matter is, if someone spends 90% of their working hour driving for a particular company, are they really an independent contractor or are they actually an employee? Because employees get different protections than gig workers who don't have the same uh, protections as employees. So we're going to keep a close eye on how this all plays out on this Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Traditionally a very busy day for gig workers and of course what's happening here in Toronto at 9 o'clock Eastern. Okay, thank you so much Marianne Domain with those details.